Hey guys, welcome back to the Real Love Podcast, the Faith Promise Podcast. We are so glad you're here. My name is Zach Stevens. I'm one of our pastors on staff, and we have an unbelievable opportunity today. We have Courtney with us from Emerald Youth. Courtney, you want to say hey? Yes. Hey guys. We're so glad that you're here. Now, Courtney, um, tell us about yourself. Just give it. Just give us a, a little history on you, and then. Uh, just to give you a, if you're trying to decide if you're going to listen to this podcast, do not turn it off, okay? Uh, Courtney's going to talk to us about the important uh, importance of mentoring uh, and being mentored, which every single person needs. And so we're going to chat through that. So I want to encourage you, uh, uh, hang out with us for 20 minutes. It's going to add value to your life. We're so excited about that. But Courtney, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Courtney Tilford. I'm from Knoxville, born and raised. Believe it or not, a lot of times people say they can't tell based off of how I'm speaking. There's not that uh, extra twang in there, right? But yes, I went to Bearden High School, went away to school in Chattanooga at UTC, go Mox, and then uh, spent some time abroad and, and I'm back here working. Um, UTC, what's Mox an abbreviation for? Well, it was moccasins, but we had to change. We had to change that because oh, it used to be moccasins like the shoe. Yes, uh huh. Yes, so we had to change that. So now we're a bird. What type yeah. of bird? Well, I'm gonna go with mocking jay. Is this terrible that I'm like, uh, I went to the school and don't nice. know? Well, so we're yep. We're gonna anything. go with that. They Say go, anything with confidence, guys. And will we've you. all learned something today. There's been a change in mascot <laughs> in Chattanooga. So, um, so you've been Emerald Youth. We partner heavily with Emerald Youth um, and Faith Promise. We believe that we we don't want to give uh, generously to a bunch of different places, but we want to give very generously to a few places that we feel is making a a massive difference, and Emerald Youth is one of those things. Now, you've been on staff for two years, so uh, talk to us about what Emerald Youth does. Yes, so Emerald is seeking to raise up a large number of inner-city urban youth to love Jesus Christ and give back and renew their communities, and so we do that through three key initiatives, which is faith, learning, and health. And so we are really, with the help of volunteers in the community and our staff, we are seeking to pour into uh, the lives of young people. And so we are also, yes, you guys have been partners with us for a long time, not only just um, a financial support, but there are many members of your church that serve as volunteers in different areas. And we are just so incredibly grateful. We truly cannot do the work we do without you guys. So appreciate you. We so believe in what you do. And I'm excited because we talked to you. Hey, what, what do you feel led to talk about today yeah. and you want to talk about from my perspective anyway the really the the cornerstone of of how Emerald Youth does its ministry in mentoring mm-hmm. and so was it the was it the um the uh desire to mentor and that effect on your life that drew you to Emerald Youth hmm I would say that was definitely a part of it and so the the position that I served with initially with Emerald, I was working directly with students one-on-one, high school students. And so I think that I have seen in different instances in my life that when you have people that intervene or give back to you in some regard early on, there's intervention that can happen. And that's where transformation can happen, right? And so I have been lucky and have had the privilege to serve alongside many of our students for the last two years. And so that did easily, that was an easy draw. Absolutely. And our students are amazing. So if you sit down and have, you know, you spend five minutes with them, you are just blown away. Yeah. I love uh, something I love about mentoring is obviously mentoring takes proximity, Mm -hmm. right? And you just said it, Hey, when you sit down with some of our students, you realize how either intelligent they are or how gifted right. they are or how mm-hmm. funny they are. And mm-hmm. so I think that even with social media and all that stuff, it seems like we have less proximity to each other than ever. And so I think what you're talking about is massive. But um, obviously mentoring and being mentored, huge. We yes. talk about it for years. But mm-hmm. what would you say? And so we'll start with mentoring, okay. right? Because being mentored is going to take some humility. So if you're a listener, prepare for some humility because uh, <laughs> it takes that for sure. But what what would you say is the importance of mentoring? Hmm. I think really the importance that I have found is we all have value and things to give back to those around us. And I think 
a lot of times we forget or we may think, oh, this is insignificant, excuse me, or I'm not a CEO of a company or I'm not a head pastor of a church or things like that. But you have life experiences and those should be shared with other people because that may allow somebody else to bypass that or to have that shared experience and feel a little less alone in it. And so I think that as we talk about making disciples or even the great commission, right? Like that is what we're, we are to do is to share our lives with others. And I mean, Jesus had his 12 disciples, but then even then he had his inner circle, right? He had his three. And so there is just, I think for a while before I even mentored myself, I used to think like, oh, I don't have time for this, you know, things like that. But there, there's just such an importance and you make time. I mean, you're just sharing life. You're doing life with another person. Definitely. And we make time for the things that are important. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, and th- there's a guy, Kerry Newhoff, he has a new book. Uh, it's called At Your Best. And I, I realized I was convicted of something that I always say in there. So I'm, I'm, I feel busy. And so they're like, hey, you should mentor, you should have a group or something like that. And I was like, well, I'm in a busy season. Right. And you're like, well, you're not really in a busy season. You just made these choices. Mm-hmm. And so it's not a busy season. It, it's really what you've created. And so mm-hmm. I think that's huge. And so you, you talked about it a little bit, but for anybody who is like uh, concerned or scared about mentoring, whether they're yes. talking about starting a group at Faith Promise or mentoring with Emerald Youth, because um, they don't have all the answers, mm-hmm. you know, what mm-hmm. would you tell that person? Yeah. We are perfectly imperfect (laughs) and no one is asking for you to be perfect. And I think that is also the beauty of mentoring is just vulnerability and transparency. And I have, I serve as a mentor to a young lady who is a sophomore at UT and she has seen me at my best and my worst. And I would say all of that is valuable for her to see, you know, there's no facade, there's no mask that I have up. And so I think even if you feel ill-equipped or unqualified, you aren't. I feel like that's what makes you qualified, right? right? Yeah, that's so good. I, I love that. And so you actually said, I'm, I'm sure uh, we'll talk about some stats about this towards the end, but uh, you talked about loneliness. Mm-hmm. I feel like that, like loneliness and depression, especially like we're not post-COVID. I, right. We're still very we're still much in it, in it right? Mm-hmm. Um but I feel like loneliness is something that the enemy is so using mm-hmm. to attack people. And so um, what? how have you seen, just because you, you work with students, or at least in, in that vein, how have you seen loneliness affecting, um, I mean, you could talk about society at large, but especially this generation coming up? Yeah, I think, you know, I've heard even more so, and there's a stat out there too that I don't know off the top of my head, but it talks about how, Um, we are the most connected in this day and age. And yet this generation, you know, our generation um, of millennials and then the generation after us, you know, is like the most depressed and anxious generation that we've, we've seen. And so that's wild to me. Um, But I have seen that very, to be very true with our students. A lot of times, even though they're you know, going to school and they see some, some friends or maybe they're at home, uh, doing online schooling because of COVID and things like that. But there is this immense loneliness and a longing for connection or to be seen or to be known or heard. And I think a lot of times they act out of that even, and maybe how they express it, they don't know how to express it, express it, excuse me, in like a healthy way. And so they are jumping to the internet or to, other things that they believe are going to provide a sense of comfort and a sense of hope. Yeah, no, I love that. And, you know, uh, right now in, in our culture and stuff like that, there's a bit of a apprehension potentially towards church or towards Jesus. And yeah, um, I personally, I'm okay with that. Um, I don't love it, but I'm okay with it because mm-hmm. I feel like if we would live a certain way, they'd be introduced to Jesus there. Right. You know, and so I, I don't know who said it, but you know, that, that we are the, the, the Jesus that people will see. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's so, I, I, mentoring is obviously a massive part of that. Right. Um, so one more thing about mentoring and then yes. we'll move to being mentored. Mm. Um, but I think that a lot, a lot of people, most people listening want to make an impact. Mm-hmm. I think that's the, that, that'd be a, the word. They want to make an impact. And mm-hmm. Some people have grandiose views. I, I really want to see the, I want to win the world. Like I have this huge impact I desire to see. And I think a lot of mm. people, whatever their passion is, they want to see this impact, but mentoring feels too small. 
Hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, you reference Jesus. You know, Jesus. He started with twelve. He had his inner three, um, and we're still all a part of the you know outflow of that that mentoring in um, in in his disciples in the church. Mm -hmm. But what is the impact you've seen from mentoring? Yeah, I think it's interesting too because I none of the students that we have that are matched with mentors are forced to. They want to have somebody that's pouring into them in a particular way. And so it's been really rich to see our students either link up with someone who maybe has the same, who studied in the same field that they are interested in going into and walking alongside them in that. I have seen uh, some of our students come out and open up a Roth IRA, you wow. know, because their mentor has sat with them and is explaining these financial things to them and is walking them through that process. And so I know that a lot of times, like you said, people want to see this immediate uh, change and this huge impact. But if if that's what you're longing to see is something quick, yeah. you know, mentoring, that's not what it is. You know, you're in there for the long haul and you see things happen sometimes a little bit over time as, as they start to trust you or open up or um, invite you into different areas of their lives. And that's what we want to do is add value to their life. I mean, that's, that's really all we can do, you know? And so it's, it's so much of a, a process. It's not, it's not an event, you mm -hmm. know? Um, mentoring, life change. Yeah. I know for me, it's been a process. And so, hey, let's let's transition a little bit to being mentored. Mm. And so, I loved because when we asked, hey, what would what, what's on your heart? What would you want to talk about? You yeah. said the importance of mentoring, mm -hmm. which I think that most people would say that, hey, it's important that you know maybe you're mentoring somebody, mm -hmm. um, but especially somebody in your position who you are at a ministry, an organization that's all about mentoring, mm -hmm. that you would bring up the importance of being mentored. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for me, uh, we get the privilege uh, to be around some of the best leaders as far as church goes in the world. And I've never, I have not met one who says that they're not mentored, mm -hmm. you know? And so for mm -hmm. you, um, why, why should we keep being mentored even as we grow up, even as we mature, even as we, we, we grow? Why would you say that's important for us to continue to be mentored? Yeah, I think personally for me, I think it's important because I long to be a lifelong learner and there's always wisdom and insight that I can gain from someone else, right? So I can think even now, I, I can think back on different teachers or coaches or Bible study leaders that I've had throughout my life that have poured into me in different seasons and mentored me. I may have not recognized it at an early age that it was, you know, me being mentored, but that's what it was, right? And then I think even now I have individuals that serve as mentors to me professionally and personally. And I, another part of that that I love is that I have the, the ability to decide who I pursue to be a mentor to me. And so I get to see these folks around me who are living life a certain way. And I think, man, I want to be like them or wow, I want to learn from them. And so I get to then, you know, invite them into my life and to speak into me and uh, that's a vulnerable, transparent like place to be, totally. right? To invite somebody in. And I may not love everything they have to say. Like, let's be honest, like true authentic mentoring might be like, hey, er, let's talk about yeah. that for a second, oh, yeah. you know, and let's pause for a moment. But that is that is good and needed for me. And I want to continue to grow and, and to be like Christ and to love and serve those around me. And so that is why I seek out mentors. I love that. I love some of the things you said there. First of all, you talked about the humility of inviting people into your life, you know, and then uh, again, another layer of humility and then vulnerability of being honest with them. Right. And, um, and so, and I have another question for you about it, but I was just processing while you were, while you were talking there, what a bummer it would be if, the people listening, if we were able to ask them, hey, tell me about uh, your mentors. Mm -hmm. And I think most time when you ask people that, it is, it's like middle school teachers, it's, right. it's some of that stuff. But if adults, if leaders, you know, don't have any mentors in this season of their life when they have the most 
to offer. They've right. had more life experience. They have more finances. They have more yep. uh, just ability. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thought that we w- and you said, I love it. You know, leaders are learners, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, a lot of people listening, even though it's not true, uh, don't see themselves as leaders. Hmm. You know, because leadership is influence. Right. Everybody has influence. I would challenge that too. Yeah, yeah. it's so big. It's mm-hmm. so big. And so I, I, I just want to challenge the people who are listening. If I say. Tell me about your greatest mentors and you're rolling back to middle school, high school, which again, hopefully they're there. But again, you talked about seeking them out. Mm -hmm. And you also said um, whenever you were seeking them out, you're looking for people you want to be like them. You Mm -hmm. want to see the fruits that's in their life, in your life. I think Mm -hmm. that's a great criteria uh, because that would be a question. How do I find a mentor? Right. And then, uh, and so, uh, Craig Rochelle, who's an awesome leader, somebody I follow, he's great. Um, this this guy kept on pestering him, if you will, because I think when we think about mentors, it's like, oh, I want to reach up to this person. Right. Um, but this guy kept on pestering about mentoring him, and Pastor Craig finally got a little frustrated and said, have you read all my books, listen to all my sermons, or listen to all my podcasts? And the guy hadn't. You know, that's mm-hmm. thousands of hours of stuff. And he said, hey, you could be mentored by anybody. So we're, we're in a state, mm-hmm. not only where you could be individually mentored, which I think is important, huge, probably it's the most important, but also we have all this content available right. to continue being a learner. So let me ask you this uh, last question, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap it all up together. But what would you say in your experience from students to adults is the biggest obstacle for people to continue to be mentored? Hmm. That's a good question. I would probably say the biggest obstacle to being mentored for for students and and maybe even adults too is that I think there becomes a time where we kind of maybe get set in our ways and we're not open to receive guidance or critiques, if you will, right? Because there can be positive critiques that people give us. And I think that when we get to that kind of space and we shut down and close off from people, we're not even open to that guidance um, or welcoming someone in to see truth, right, of where we are or what we need or where we're trying to go, um, you know, in life and what we're trying to achieve and things like that. And so, um, yeah, that's what I would say in my opinion. That's good. And I, I just wrap that up from a biblical perspective as pride. Mm-hmm. You know, and, yes. and pride cuts both ways. And, you know, a definition of pride is just thinking about yourself too much. Mm-hmm. And some of us think about ourselves too much in a really positive way. And some of us think about ourselves too much in a really negative way. That's good. But the, the question is, who shapes our view of us? Is it the word mm-hmm. or is it the world? Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that's a great question for us to ask, because if, if we're struggling with a reaching out to a mentor, or if we have, because I think a lot of us have somebody who could be a mentor, but going back to what you said about being vulnerable enough to be mentored, I think is, it's there's such intentionality there, mm-hmm. right? And we, we've gotten to where we're such consumers, you know, that if it doesn't come to me, if it doesn't, doesn't pursue me, then I'm I'm just not going to do it. And, right. uh, and we just, th- there'll be a day where we're held accountable for mm-hmm. what we did or didn't do. And I just, I don't think it's possible to reach our full potential without being mentored, you know? And so, and uh, Jesus even describes his relationship with the father, why he's here mm-hmm. as, as being mentored. And so it, it's just a, it, again, the well is so deep mm-hmm. and we're super great for your time. But as we wrap Thank up together, guys. Drew, are there any loose ends that we left out there for us to wrap up together? I wouldn't call them loose ends. A couple of interesting things that, that uh, Courtney was talking about uh, and you were talking about, Pastor Zach, with loneliness. So obviously, uh, loneliness has actually been growing for Generation Z, uh, Gen Z, uh, shorthand called there, um, on a rating scale that they did recently for a study, uh, rated 48 uh, out of a scale of 100, uh, as opposed to uh, w- who you would think would be the most lonely, the elderly, 72 and older, uh, they only rated a 39. What that basically means is is that uh, Gen Z is more lonely. It's that the most connected, yet the, mo- the least connected. Um, and why that's a huge problem, Cigna, who's a global insurer and health services company, did a study on this. What they found out was, because obviously they're doing insurance, loneliness actually has the same effect on mortality as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. 
Um, and in 2020, there were 93,000 opioid deaths in the United States. It's the highest in history. Um, and so reasons to mentor, um, if that doesn't get you out of bed, um, you know, literally saves lives. Young adults also with mentor, 55% less likely to skip a day of school, 78% more likely to volunteer regularly. Listen to this one. If you mentor a student or a young person, they are 90% more likely to become a mentor themselves. Wow. So you literally multiply yourself just by doing it. 130% more likely to hold leadership positions. Um, I love statistics that are over 100% because it makes it seem huge. Um, but there's some other crazy things. Uh, Fortune 500 companies, 71% of Fortune 500 companies have mentoring programs. 97% of people who are in them say they're valuable, but only 37% of people are in them which is crazy because uh, one out of every four person who's mentored sees a salary grade change as opposed to only uh, one out of 20 um, if they're not mentored. Um, people who are mentored are promoted five times more than those without mentors. So if you're, if you're listening and you're looking for someone, if you're looking for a reason to be mentored, to get over that pride, get over yourself, opportunity abounds. 89% of people with mentors believe their colleagues value their work more. Um, you literally feel more valued if you have uh, a mentor. So those are just incredible things. You can actually go check out emeraldyouth.org uh, and get backslash, or I'm sorry, forward slash, get involved. There's a couple of ways, donate, become. But I didn't want to leave without us resolving one of the bigger issues of the podcast, which is Scrappy Mock and, and, and the <laughs> University of Tennessee. So the mascot is Scrappy Mock. He is actually was first seen in 1997. He's a northern mockingbird, which is the state bird of Tennessee, and he was named after legendary <laughs> former Chattanooga football coach, A.C., quote, Scrappy Moore. So the Scrappy Mocks. Yes, University Mockingbird, Mockingjay. I was close. I appreciate you. So there you go, yeah. Courtney. Thanks for clearing that yeah, up. <laughs> that's, that's for everybody. We would rather Mockingjay. Who's not a Hunger Games <laughs> I was saying, that's what I was like. Maybe the Hunger Games was just I'm on my mind. totally with you. Uh, <laughs> nice. Hey, I would I would suggest because this is what I'll do. I would you know hit that you know that backwards fifteen number a couple of times and listen to those stats again. Those are significant, um, and the potential that you have to change somebody's life is significant. And anything that tells you otherwise, I would suggest, isn't uh, statistically sound, uh, but it's also not biblically sound. And so, um, hey, Courtney. Uh, really one of the things I want to make sure we did today is let you know how proud we are of you and what a what an honor it is to partner with what you're doing. And a lot of times at, at Faith Promise, we talk about being generous, and we'll, we'll tell a story from Mineral Youth, but we're huge believers in leaders here. And so to sit with a leader from Mineral Youth who, who you know, you, you started there by sitting with students, um, and now you're 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 over donor development. You know you're a young woman, young leader over donor development, and we 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 deeply desire to see a revival, to see real people with real problems experience God's real love, and so we think we call it the E R O I, the eternal return on investment in you, in Mr. Steve Diggs, and in Emerald Youth is so worth it, and so we can't really articulate our gratitude for your ministry. And so what we'll keep on doing is show you our belief by uh, supporting what you guys do so that uh, something as silly as money isn't a constraint for mm -hmm. the life-changing ministry that you mm -hmm. do. And so we're grateful for you. Hey, one last Thank thing. You. Give us an interesting fact about yourself that maybe somebody doesn't know. Yeah, I think a fun fact for me is I lived in China for two years and so when we just began the pod or before we began the podcast, we were actually uh, speaking in Mandarin. We a were bit. like together. I like to be inclusive. We so I will say we. We were. We were, <laughs> we were. Could you speak a little bit Mandarin? Yeah. Ni hao. Well, <laughs> do you e want more? Everybody knows that one. Okay. Do we all? Okay. Well, we do now. Ni hao. Wu jiao tian yu yang. Could you do it in a slightly lower register so I could take credit for it? Ni hao. Wo jiao. Tian yu yang. Okay. 
You could I, like I like yeah, this register. Yeah, I, I feel like that was, that was, that was, uh, that was a little little that was actually there. that was actually Pastor <laughs> Zach talking. That was not Courtney. You know, the, let the, the record state. What I'll say is maybe Chattanooga's uh, you know mascot isn't the Mockingjay, but I think Courtney's <laughs> might be. Okay, so you know, hey, uh, we love you, Courtney. We love Thank your more you guys. Views. We're proud of you. We're so grateful for you, and we'll keep on winning the world together. Let's uh, do it. Faith promise. We love you. We believe in you. Have a great week. <laughs>